talk more on camera about how much you like the camera. Gosh, I love the Sony A7S3. <laughs> That's the best camera ever. I mean, it really is. I wish I had several. Because also, though. it's a, it's a, you can take just as good pictures on it as video. Yeah. And that's really the wild card. I'm like the jaded acapella guy. I had already quit like four acapella groups <laughs> and quit country music once. So you need to know that backstory. I had actually said no to two different groups that asked me to audition for the sing-off and another group that offered me a spot on television. And that group just happened to be Street Corner Symphony. <laughs> so interestingly enough, if had I said yes, like Adam Chance, Chance probably would have never been... Yeah. In, in our in the acapella world at all at all at all you know wow yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that forgot that yeah. I've never heard that yeah and That's he crazy. and he man and he knows that you know it's like he was he knows he was like Mark's last call like please say yes <laughs> everyone keeps saying no um, so yeah we've laughed about that before like I probably wouldn't God. really know him if I said yes to them and again they had already been accepted onto the show mm -hmm. and then their base couldn't do it for whatever reason so they were like we're offering you like national television. And that's how like sticking to my guns I was. I was like, Someone no, I'm yeah. not doing the like this acapella thing anymore. Um, so when it came up with you guys, it's like you got to be kidding me. <laughs> but again, we had a cruise ship gig that left out of Jersey, and the audition was the day before in New York. So it was like, I mean, the universe Almost. was was making well close enough. Yeah, the yeah, universe we, was like making it obvious that we have nothing to lose, really. But yeah, we had, they, we're going out of Puerto Rico, but the cruise ship would fly us from wherever. <clears throat> so I eventually said, you know, let's just go to New York, and then they'll fly us from New York to Puerto Rico. Right. So we don't have to pay one way. Right. To so get relatively there. speaking, it only cost maybe like a thousand bucks. Yeah. Or something. Oh, see, all right. So it was all twisted in my mind. I, I thought we had. A, I thought we were going out of. I thought the same thing. I swear to God, we got on the yeah. ship in Newark, but we must not have. Mm -hmm. And yeah. see, I, I tell the story. Do you remember Marie? She sings the Seventh Avenue from time to time too. The reason that a lot of this happened is because I wanted to go see her, and so I the pushed the guys motivation. and I said, "Guys, let's just do the audition. It's going to be in New York. It's fine." And that's honestly one of the reasons. Well, that happened. and we <laughs> always like it was never a hard sell. Like if it was New York, we all love New York so yeah. much. So it was like, all right, free trip Bye. to New York. I'll go sing for these. You know, again, it was Humphrey's fourth attempt at it. So mm -hmm. it's like we'll probably not get on anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, well, okay, fine, let's do it. Yeah. So I've already recounted uh, my story in the other sessions about how that played out. So you guys, now in your words, the day of the sing-off audition. Well, again, we're so oblivious to like how marketable country is and how country we came off. Because mm -hmm. we used to open our shows with Life is a Highway, which was a rock song. And, and Right, but at the time, it had just been like huge on the charts as a Rascal Flatts song. Right. So mm -hmm. it, it was really a country song in that moment, mm -hmm. right? So we're not thinking of it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're going to do Life is a Highway. Again, a rock song. Just a high energy, good opener. Great way. It's a good first, song for us. Good right, first impression. sing three songs. Mm -hmm. And come in there with three songs. And we kind of tossed the leads around, and it was just a nice showcase for the group. And then our second song was going to be Your Man, but more because it was a bass feature. Right. And we no really one had sure that done did. that on the sing-off. Right. Yeah. We wanted to show off Tim as a bass. Yep. You know? And then that's when the producers stop us, and they're like, Guys, yeah, the, the here, yeah. Here's an idea. What if you guys are like the token country? <laughs> and of course, I'm like, no, 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 no. This, no. this is what she said. This is what she said. She goes, okay, guys, I'm having a vision. I'm not kidding you. That's what she said. She goes, I'm having a vision. What's your next song gonna be? And don't say Train or Jason Mraz. <laughs> Literally, I, that's verbatim what she said. I will never forget that one. She said no, not Train. I don't remember. Yes, that. she, she said, said not Train. She, was she like, said not Train or Jason Mraz. Yeah, because she was like, well, you know, what, what, what if you're a country group and we're like, ah, we don't. That's not like really our thing. And she was like, she well, falls wait, what, over what, yeah. the table. We she were goes, like, oh, it's going to be a train song. She was like, well, song. what's your next song? And please don't tell me Jason Mraz or Train. And it was going to be Train. 50 yeah. Ways to Kill Your yeah. Lover, Say Goodbye. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a train song. And she falls over yeah. the table. Oh. Just so, just, oh, just traumatic. <laughs> and then she was like, do you guys do any other country songs? And we we're like trying to think of what we're we like, no, what we had like, ready to do at the, on the spot, and we didn't have well, a couple months ago. Yeah, it was a while back. It, it was maybe yeah. three or four yeah. months before. But we had sung it one time, you know. We like we learned it for this gig. Yeah. That was Luke Bryan. No, that was Luke Bryan. Gig. No way. No way. 
No way. Maybe. No way. Uh -uh. Luke yeah. Bryan was out in Nebraska. This was in some convention room singing for like a, a heart company or like some sort of medical company. I bet we learned it for that. We did it again with we you probably the did. second time. Probably. We did that at the Luke Bryan no, show. That, that, we, we did it at the corporate gig. That was yeah. the first time the band had ever done it. That's what you guys had told me. You were like, we haven't done this before, but you're singing this for this thing. Yeah, we had learned it. We only sang it once. We didn't sing it at the Luke Bryan thing. Were you at the Luke Bryan thing? Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Anyway, right, so anyway. a corporate, <laughs> <You're right. It's laughs> some, some some corporate gig that hired us was like, hey, will you please learn "We Shall Be Free" by Garth Brooks? And we said sure, and thank God we yeah, did, because yeah. you know, fast forward quite a bit, and you know, these casting directors are like, do you know any more country? And we're like, kinda. We sing a Garth Brooks song one time, and they said we'll go out in the hall and polish that up and come back in and sing it for us. That's Which what we like, did. Wow, they, they want us to come back. Yeah, yeah. They were like, we're going to so see badly. The, yeah. They're like, and we're going to see the next group. You guys go out. You're professionals, right? <laughs> like, You're professionals. And I was like, okay, and we go out there. And of course, me singing lead, I'm just like, I don't know these lyrics at all. You know how terrible I am with this. <laughs> I can't do nothing. Like, what is this going to be? Uh, we come back in. You know. And so, they said they liked that one the best of all three of them. Yeah. Because we were just more off the cuff and just winging it. And then. You know, so the way it works is like those, the people that do the audition, they narrow it down to like 20 groups and then they take those 20 groups to the actual television producers and then they pick their favorite 10. But the lady told us on the spot, she was like, here's the thing, like country is so marketable. We have never had a country group on the show. If you guys commit to being a full-time country group, I can almost guarantee you'll be on the show. Yeah. And we had to chew on that and then go on the cruise ship, and there was much debate. <laughs> I mean, he, I, I, I'm not ashamed to admit, at that point yeah. in time, I was still a no vote. Um, yeah. Rob and I were no votes. You know, he was like, hell yeah, I think you were hell yeah, and I think Adam Rupp was like the tiebreaker. And, yeah, I was know, definitely, I just want to be in the show, yeah. I don't care. Put me in a cowboy hat, whatever. So, <laughs> so it was like two to two, and then Adam Rupp was like, you know, they were projecting about 10 million viewers for the first episode of season four and it was like I can't really turn that down so and we but remember we were like guys we're, we're a country group after this if we <laughs> yeah. do this like that's just it there's no going back and I was always like guys we can be a country group we can do whatever we want to and call a country yeah. folks will love us all we gotta do is be ourselves and we'll call a country mm -hmm. and we you know we ended up doing it thank god I got outvoted <laughs> yeah, it worked right. out I remember on the show for the first few weeks too. I started looking around and saying, "Guys, we kind of actually sound like a country group. Like it's, it's we changing. are. It's it's, it's the, yeah, But look, I mean, it makes sense. Like I grew up in in as country of a of a of a place as you can grow up in a, as country of a lifestyle as you can grow up. You know, I, on a, on a dirt road. My stepfather's a farmer. Like four wheel drives, fishing my whole life. But I can remember being in kindergarten, and first grade, and second grade, and like, you know me, I never stopped singing. It was the same thing when I was a kid, and people would hear me singing country music and they'd make fun of me. In South Georgia, in country <laughs> as cornbread territory, and people would make fun of me. So I grew up thinking I don't like country music because people would make fun of me for it. You know, yeah. it took me kind of coming into my own to be like, no, I like it. You know what I mean? And Racing now, so it's, it's becoming way more normal. There's a lot less country hate for the sake of it. You know, mm. there's so many debates in country music as a whole anyway. But regardless, we just were, I, I, the only reason I hated country music, or I thought I did, is because people made fun of me as a kid for it. Mm. I remember um, you talking about how, like, on the cruise ships or whatever, that you were trying to squash your country. Yeah. Take the vowels out and change them. Yeah, because, you know, I was in college for music theater, uh -huh. and then, uh, and I, all through college, everybody's just like, you got to lose your accent, and I had to learn, I had to learn how to lose my accent whenever I was on stage in a production. That right? shit didn't work, it, just so you know. No, <laughs> <laughs> when you first got in the group, do you remember, every once in a while he would say yeah. something, yeah. and all of the rest of you would turn and look at me, and I would have to translate. <laughs> yeah. What do you say? That happened for a long time. That happened for a long time. But yeah, so I was trying to like get out of it, and then eventually I realized that like the less I cared about it, the more people seemed to like, you know, like me in auditions or whatever. If I had the accent, they kind of liked it. So eventually I was like, eh, full tilt, just going to talk like my daddy does. Embrace you know, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had that same thing. I never took classes or anything, but there was a time where I tried to kind of water down my accent. I tried to be as neutral as possible, and I got to a point where people were like surprised when they found out I was from Texas. 
And then it was like, what am I doing? And same thing with country music, you know, it was like, I just got to a, a point where, you know, I'm trying to like find my independence as a human and country was my parents' music. Mm. So I was like, ah, pop music is where it's at, you know, <laughs> I thought I was going to be like a pop singer, the hell. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, you know, it's, I always, I tell kids to this day, like my biggest life lesson is just like, listen to the universe and stay out of your own way. Because there were so many signs saying that I should not only be doing acapella music, but that I should be doing country music. And for whatever reason, I was resistant for a long time. And, you know, once I gave in to both of those things, it got me a record deal in my 30s. Pretty wild. Yeah, I remember that story. Yeah. Craziest. Yeah, so then we uh, made the vote to be on the show. And I remember they came out to film our opening thing and like well, just country. Well, before, I don't no, know. if you really, if you want to get all the story, right? Okay, sure. It's all the we, story. we were on this trip. We were like, okay, we'll do it. And then we called them up. And we were like, yeah, we'll do it. And they were like, okay, we want you to learn one more song. Yeah. You guys just just put in. I don't care what it is. Pick a country song and send us another one. Just in a a, a video, just like camera. Just yeah, like live. Just, if you're yeah, just, good, yeah, just live. Right. No editing, no nothing. Just an acoustic mic. If you can do it a couple days, that'd be great. Right. But they want. They're like, we want it now. So we were in Vegas. When they called me to tell me that, and you were, did you arrange it? He arranged it. Yeah, he arranged it. I thought so. He arranged I was in Vegas for whatever reason. I don't remember why, but the producer called me and said we want another song. And they were texting everybody like, "Oh shit, we did we sing it? No, we didn't. We picked the yeah. song. It was, it was on the church. It was yeah. It was Hunter Hayes' re most recent release at the time. I want crazy. And I remember we we learned it pretty quickly. And I don't think we had to sing the whole thing either. We might have. But I feel like it might have even been a shorter version. No, I think we did because we were having to cut yeah, it down. Yeah, we did. You're right. So we learned the full thing. I remember recording it in Adam's basement. That yep. video might exist somewhere. It does. put together a group of all the home free subs that we built up over the years and they went out for the summer and none of the original <coughs> home free were there so and we worked out so and we, but we figured and nobody complained yeah I mean, we figured we're going to be kicked off after, after a couple of weeks and then we'll be back and we'll finish out the summer and we'll be fine it's a little, little 10 seconds of fame and we're calling up Deke Sheridan and saying what are the odds of us getting kicked off week one what do you think what's your sense it's like I think you guys will make it at least a little ways in there I said okay then we can do the B group this makes sense this works and um didn't happen that way. <laughs> no, it did not. Nope. I remember that first episode was doing cruise, and after they had tried to get us to do well, uh, highway first, country girl shake it for me. Yeah. Oh, that was an option. You guys yeah. do country girl shake it for me, and we were like, no. And I was like, we're definitely leaving because they they wanted us to do a few things, and we were just like those guys on the show who just kept being like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> no, that's not gonna work for us. Um, yeah, we just, we killed it, and. Uh, we kind of like, right, we're, we're kind of in the end, guys. We're going to be going all the way. Man, I was ready for the rug to get pulled out from us. It's same, pretty much same. any moment. The whole I was like, they're just building us up because they want to see our reaction when they yank it out from under us. Yeah, and it's, I have, you know, I've gone back since and watched our performances. And I'm like, all right, we kind of stood out. But at the time, you know, you're, you're in, in it, it yeah. and it's reality television. So it's not even necessarily a talent competition, you know? It's like they're just trying to make good TV, and 
that would have made good TV if they would have called it controversy. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's like we we to this day we get that comment all the time from fans that they were like, we knew as soon as you guys opened your mouths on Cruise, like, oh, well, there's the winner of this season. I always felt after Ring of Fire that I thought we're going to be in the final at least. That was kind of the turning point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, where it was like, huh, we might actually have a shot at this. <laughs> yeah. But then it's like. Wait, do we want to win this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we literally had that conversation. We went back and forth so much being like, should we win this? Because yeah. we got to sign this contract if we win this. Do we want to do that? Yeah. I feel like I had a conversation with you about that or something, and I think you said, hell yeah, screw it, let's just win the damn thing. Well, no, no, that was our lawyer, Ken Abdo. Yeah. That was his You're right. Yeah, it You're was right. Now, he, he was, was like, yeah. guys, because he was a Sony lawyer too. He was like, I got your back. You know, and I'm I'm not a trusting individual with folks like that because mm. I just I mean I, I'm always skeptical. But as time has proven, he really has always had Humphrey's back, and he meant it, man. And in the moment, every time we talk about it, he was like, "Look, guys, this, that, and the other. All of it really matters afterwards, and what you do with it. Just go win the damn thing. Just go win the damn thing." Yeah, and we're also thinking, "Well, it's not going to be an issue. It's, it's not going to come up, so it doesn't matter." But right. just in case, well. And again, that's the song that kind of clinched the audition process for us. Ended up being the song we performed yeah. on the finale. But we're going up against Ten, the gospel group, doing Love on Top by Beyonce. Mm. And murder. So, it. Just, so murdering just on it. paper, Hunter Hayes' I Look Crazy <laughs> right. with five people. sung by like you know a group that's got yeah. three Minnesota boys in it. And a song that didn't even make the top ten on the country chart. Yeah. Against a, a ten-person gospel group doing Love on Top. <laughs> on paper, those things don't really stack up at all. Especially the musicians. You know, you know, and then on top of that, you had you know the 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 high school group that was way better than any mm -hmm. high school group should be, and it's like all of this is such a good story. I always laugh how the producers tried to you know make it more dramatic than it was, but for us it was like acapella summer camp. You know, yeah, like having so much fun with everybody. They tried to pit us against each other to a degree, at least it felt that way, and none of us were having it. You know, <laughs> they would be like, so say some t to say hey, you have to really you have to just destroy the other group this week, and everybody would be like, no. Yeah, whenever we did the, um, the when they made us everybody do the ultimate sing off, and we did that that Caddyshack tune with Philharmonic, I specifically remember that interview process with Melissa, the producer, because she was like, "But you know, if it comes down to both of you guys, which one of you is going home?" I'm like, "Neither." <laughs> I'm like, "Because after this performance." I promise you it won't be either one of us. You know? And she's like getting so mad at me. You can't say that. And she's like, listen, you know, just theoretically, like, give me something. And me being sarcastic, and I was like, well, no matter what happens, we ain't going nowhere. You know, <laughs> thinking like they'll never use that. And then they freaking used it of course on they national did. television. Yeah, we need that. I need that gif. Yeah. Okay, uh, hey, I'm throwing that in there too. It's on there. <laughs> no matter what. We ain't going nowhere. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, that was fun. That was good stuff. You know, and, and honestly, when, when the confetti came down, like, I felt good about it. I feel like, I think we're going to win, guys, but you don't know. And they drag right. it out they for do. so So much longer than they ended for TV. Yeah. We were just sitting there with it going, <laughs> doom, doom. Minutes, two, three, four, five, ten minutes, just sitting there. I swear to God, oh, it, was, it was over five minutes for sure of us just being like, yeah. And then, and then they could be like, and it's going to be. Wait. And then just longer waiting, and we're all just sitting there looking around, and I'm just like trying to keep it together. Yeah. Uh, and our parents are there, friends and family yeah. are there, you know, it was wild. We, was he was first... all hopped up on the. Uh, oh, yeah, Brendan's you know, on. I was on zero, and the doctor was like, look, you're going to be emotional. Just don't worry about it. Because I blew out my voice for the final yeah, episode. Yeah, whistled in the dressing yeah, room. Yeah, and Nick. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting there, I'm whistling in our camera blocking, and Nick goes, a whistle solo, that is really ballsy. That's <laughs> cool, man. Cool. Man. It's like, no, he's going he's gonna to say it. He's just saving his voice. Yeah. That was uh, crazy. I mean, again, it's, it's television producers, you know, trying to put on a good television show, and they know mm -hmm. nothing about vocal health. They know nothing about mental health, you know. There's always a fight with the producers. And so and it was... Yeah. All right, run it again and sing it full out, you know. And once they realized that Austin could do what he could do vocally, 
Well, then they wanted to hear it every time, you know, and on top of our performances, there was like the group number at the beginning and they always sure. gave him some C or something yeah, like that, yeah. you know, and, and they wanted to, you know, watch that over and over again. And that was whenever blocking. I still thought that I could just show up and sing. You know, well, and not just and that. not have to like, you know, not have to like actually prepare and like do a voice lesson virtually every single day mm -hmm. that we're gonna do a show. Because I've never sang that much in my life. I was working on a cruise ship. We, we were doing like 10, 10 day cruises, and I'd sing, you know, Once three week, hours, week, yeah. the whole thing. You know what I mean? And on Four top or five songs of that, the, show. the first half of the filming process and the competition process. We were real, yes, ma'am, yes, right. sir, because <laughs> sure. you know you're just happy to be there, and you and don't want to piss anyone off. And it's only one day off the whole time. Yeah. So there's never that like if you even have one day off a week, we didn't have a day course. off. One day, one day we went to I'm not seeing as much. We had a half day off once at the very end of the whole run. Was that not a whole day? No, nope, it was a half day. We went to dinner. Oh well, then never mind. That was it. I, the entire I, I that's seven days a week, twelve hour days. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that's a, you can't do that as a vocalist. Yeah. You need and our battle song. We learn every week too, even though we never had to do them. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I know it was, we were A, a little <clears throat> cocky about our instrument, and B, we were just like, whatever you want, Mr. Producer, please let us stay on this <laughs> yeah. show. Um, and, but then, you know, I kind of remember the turning point, A, it was Ring of Fire, um, but also toward the end, it's like, well, they have like really developed us as major characters in this whole arc, so they're not just going to fire us on the spot if we don't do something Mm -hmm. They want us to do so. I remember, like, we both wanted haircuts, and they said no. Mm -hmm. And we were like, "All right, I'm a grown man. I'm gonna go get a haircut. And <laughs> you can process your emotions about that." Or like, <laughs> well, what was funny to me was that whenever we first got there, they were like, "Okay, guys, don't shave your beard at all, please. We want you guys to be like scruffy and country." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "I promise you, you're gonna want me to shave because I can't <laughs> grow a beard right now. I just can't." And they were like, "No, grow it out. It's gonna be fine. It's looking great. It's looking great." Two weeks later. The day of the show, they're like, shave. No shave. <laughs> no shave. I don't remember that last, that last week of the show. I'm having breakfast with, uh, with Rob and his parents, and my mom's there. And they really wanted Rob to get to, like, Duck Dynasty level. But they had told us all, like, just let it, you know, country's all about scraggly, let it go. And uh, Shannon Lundquist, Rob's mom, goes... Why didn't they make you grow out? Like, why didn't they ask you to grow out your stubble? I said, they did. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> she, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. So this is, it's been pretty growing cool. ever since, and this is all, and it's still pretty patchy. I heard that final episode was fun because for all the episodes prior to that, we had fans in the audience where the casting company would just give them signs and like, hey, you're cheering for Home Free now. And the people had no idea. They're just walking yeah. up there. But for the finale, we actually had our family and friends who were out for it. Yeah. So they were really cheering for us. And we got the t-shirts. Well, and, and t -shirts. some of the family members of the other groups had become Home Free fans. <laughs> yeah, like really? Joe's sister yeah. from Philharmonic was actually like a Home Free fan at that point. <laughs> yeah, because they've been at all the tapings. Yeah. 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 Oh, all the magic, magic and mystery behind it all. Yeah. yeah, and then we won, and the rest is history. And I know someday that it'll all turn.